So Garbage Pail Kids were one of, if not the first thing that made me want to be an artist when I was in third grade. And I specifically remember going into the store called Long's Drugs and seeing bright pink packs of cards and buying one pack and then opening it. And my little tiny brain was like, these are so demented and this is a regular store. I just bought these little things and they're cartoons, but they're weird and messed up. And I fell in love. It was as simple as that. I was like, I want all of these cards I want to see them, I want to laugh at them, I want to enjoy them, and then I started drawing them. These have always been a visual reference for me for anything, and Garbage Pail Kids to me were one of the first like memes, right? Because you have this template of this baby doll, and how many different ways can we make this baby doll crazy and inventive and creative and what is it like 30 something years later and it's still going and I've adopted that exercise in a lot of my art. Making Garbage Pail Kids was a dream, but it felt like an irreachable dream, right? It just felt like something that I was just inspired by as a child and that would be, it was on a different planet, right? It was untouchable to me. And then the Topps Project 70 came up. So in a way, I approached my Project 70 cards as a Garbage Pail Kid project. And then all of a sudden Topps is like, hey, we like what you did with Project 70. Let's do a whole set. And I kind of was just like, this isn't happening, this isn't happening. And then I was like, it's happening. And that was exciting. Working on these Garbage Pail Kids was a little different than at Project 70, where with Project 70, I was working individually, one card at a time. With these, I got to work on an entire set all at once, and there was a very classic branding that goes along with it. There's a look, there's a style, and so that melding with my own style was one of the most exciting things about this project. With a lot of my other art, it's very freeform and I draw and, and if I do apply a narrative or if I do have a story behind it, it usually comes afterwards. But for this one, knowing how much I love Garbage Pail Kids and how much they formed a sense of humor in mind from the writing of them, I wanted to come up with the names and the gags first. And then when something sticks, I'm like, that's the one that I'm gonna figure out how to draw. And so some of the cards that are my favorites, the reason they're my favorites is because I think the names are really good. Like with Juan Soto being one of the dead, for Ronald Acuna Jr., Area 50 Ron, and he unzips himself and he's this big alien. And then also there's another layer to it, which is I wanted to pay homage to some existing Garbage Pail Kids, which throughout the years, Garbage Pail Kids has done to itself. So I wanted to kind of continue that tradition. So, you know, obviously Dynamite is the most iconic Garbage Pail Kid in Adam Baum. And I wanted one of the most iconic baseball players to represent that one. Getting the opportunity to create my own personal Garbage Pail Kid for the set that I was working on was surreal. Not only because I grew up with Garbage Pail Kids, but just because of the fact that like, I can do whatever I want with myself. In brainstorming, I was working with baseball players and working with baseball concepts, but I'm not an athlete. I don't know if you can tell. So putting myself in an athletic form felt a little strange. And I was like, well, I've just been the creator of this. So let's put myself in the artistic behind the scenes creator role and, and start with that. As far as the card itself, I've had a beard for like 15 years now or so, but in general, Garbage Pail Kids don't have beards. So it was like, oh man, how can I be true to that doll sense? And so I got to do all these individual plastic beard hairs, which was fun. This is my Brightmare logo. So we got that as a little Easter egg in there. One of the other things is this is kind of an homage to an existing Garbage Pail Kid card because there was like an old card where there was a Q-tip getting shoved up a nose. And I was like, oh, let's do a pencil because that's neat. I always do bright colors and dark subject matter. So I wanted to make sure that my self-portrait also reflected that, you know, so it's got the bright colors, but it's also got a little bit of darkness in there. Being so inspired by these when I was younger and, that, and them being a consistent inspiration, right? It's not like something that I just remember from my childhood. It's something that I've continuously collected and continuously looked at as a form of inspiration. I go back and look at these cards and having the opportunity to be part of that legacy in a small way is insane because I go back and I look at these and I'm like, oh, I never thought that I would fit in here, but here I am.